Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I am so excited to share this massive book haul with you. What do you do when you barely have time to read and your bookshelves are already overflowing? Why, you go with your friend to library sales and get massive amounts of books. This summer I had a lot of fun going to some book sales with Heather from Fresh Parchment. I'll link her channel down below. We went to one in my hometown and one in Connecticut and they were fantastic and I got a lot of books. Plus I discovered some free little libraries by me and I've been going on walks and finding lots of gems there as well. So this is a big haul. There are over 20 books so we'd better get going. I've got some classics, I have some middle grade, I think there might be a historical fiction or two in here, some contemporary, bit of everything. One of the book sales that we went to had an amazing trollop section and I picked up quite a few of those. The first is An Editor's Tales by Anthony Trollope. This is a series of short stories that were published together in book form in 1870. Apparently Anthony Trollope's favorite of this collection was The Spotted Dog, but there are others in here as well. It includes The Turkish Bath, Mary Gresley, Josephine de Montmorency, The Panjandrum, Mrs. Brumby, and The Spotted Dog. So I'm excited for this one. You guys know I love Anthony Trollope, and this is not a super chunky Trollope. I feel like a lot of Trollope books are very chunky. I also picked up Lady Anna by Anthony Trollope. This one sounds really interesting. It's about a woman who has ambitions to be a countess. She marries a wealthy lord who six months into their marriage claims that the marriage was null and void, that this woman was actually his mistress, and that he had another wife. Sounds really exciting. I also picked up this Anthony Trollope, Sir Harry Hotspur of Humblethwaite. This one is about a very rich heiress who is being pursued by princes but is pledged to her cousin and the story is about her reforming her cousin. I'm sure there are more twists and turns as it's a Trollope novel. That's it for the Trollope but this sale also had a gorgeous copy of Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. I absolutely love this book. I, it's my favorite Thomas Hardy that I've read so far, and I didn't own a copy, so now I do. I also found this gorgeous copy of Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. I think this is an absolutely exquisite edition, and I love how it has somebody's book plate on the inside. I was a huge fan of Jamaica Inn, when I read it last year, the year before, and it gives me definite Wuthering Heights vibes. So I'm excited to finally own a copy of Jamaica Inn on my shelves. Next up, I have this Penguin Classics um, Black Spine edition of Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I want to read all of Dickens at some point, and I have not read Oliver Twist, nor did I own Oliver Twist, which I was actually quite surprised about, um, but I found this copy and I picked it up. And then related to Dickens, I have this amazing find, John Mullins' The Artful Dickens, The Tricks and Ploys of the Great Novelist. This book looks brand new. I got it at a used book sale for two, three dollars, something like that. Absolutely insane. Just an amazing find. I'm so happy about it. My goal is to eventually read all of Dickens's work and then read this book because John Mullen is brilliant. I love what he did for Jane Austen in What Matters in Jane Austen. It really does a great job of looking at her work as a whole and creating these parallels between the works. It's just amazing literary criticism and I can't wait to hear what he says about Dickens. Moving right along here, I have this book, which I think I got for free, and this is Passing by Nella Larson. I read this years and years ago, but I do want to revisit it at some point and then watch the Netflix movie as well. This book takes place in the Harlem Renaissance and is about two women, um, one who is an African-American, living in Harlem and 
she reconnects with her friend from childhood who is passing as white. It's all about black identity and the black community in New York City in the 1920s. Also for free, I found this copy of Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese. I love this book. I read it years and years ago and it would be nice to have it on my shelves in order to revisit it. This explores the backstory of Bertha Mason from Jane Eyre and features a sort of post-colonial view of Jane Eyre in this interesting retelling. Another gem from the Free Little Library is this book, Seraph on the Sewanee by Zora Neale Hurston. I haven't heard much about anything else that Zora Neale Hurston wrote besides Their Eyes Were Watching God, which I read and loved. Uh, so I thought I would pick this book up and see what it was all about. The back of the book says that it's about marriage and the evolution of a marriage where there's very little communication and the marriage is at odds with uh, the woman's desires. It's about love, attraction, faith, and loyalty. So it seems like a really interesting book about relationships. Back to some book sale books. I picked up Christmas Days, 12 Stories, and 12 Feasts for 12 Days by Jeanette Winterson. I absolutely love this book. I read it a while back, but I read it on ebook. And this book has recipes and illustrations in it. So this is a festive little treat for the holidays for me this year. And who knows, maybe when I revisit it, I'll be able to make some of these recipes. Next up, I have Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. This sounds like an amazing historical fiction book that is right up my alley. It is a Victorian Gothic mystery about a kidnapping of a child with potentially supernatural powers. Jess Kidd is one of those authors that I think I'm going to absolutely fall in love with and this seems like a good place to start. I also have himself on my shelves. I haven't actually read anything by Jess Kidd, unless you count the short story that was in the uh, anthology of Victorian related short stories, uh, The Haunting Season. And I absolutely loved Jess Kidd's story in that collection, so I think that I'll really love some of her other work. I also picked up a copy of Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I haven't read this one, but it's been recommended to me a bunch of times because of my love of sort of like interconnected stories, um, specifically Emily St. John Mandel's universes where things just kind of come together in the end and all these various threads merge in really interesting ways. But I don't really know what this book is about. I read the first page and the writing was brilliant and the back of the book has some very interesting quotes. This one really got me. The novel as series of nested dolls or Chinese boxes, a puzzle book, and yet not just dazzling, amusing, or clever, but heartbreaking and passionate too. I've never read anything quite like it, and I'm grateful to have lived for a while in all its many worlds, which are all one world, which is in turn enchanted by Mitchell's spellcaster prose, our own. That's from Michael Chabon. So, Sounds interesting. I also picked up The Last Days of Dogtown by Anita Diamant. She is the author of The Red Tent, which is a book that is on my shelf somewhere behind me that I absolutely loved. And the description of this book just sounded really interesting to me. Um, it's a historical fiction, I think, but I'm having trouble discerning what time period it takes place in. Anyway, the back says, set on the high ground at the heart of Cape Ann, the village of Dogtown is peopled by widows, orphans, spinsters, scoundrels, whores, free Africans, and witches. And then it goes on to describe all of these really interesting and quirky sounding characters. And I think it would be a, just a really phenomenal book. And I hadn't heard of it before. I also picked up Tracy Chevalier's The Lady and the Unicorn which is a historical fiction book that takes place in the Middle Ages and centers around this famous tapestry that looks very familiar to me, but I don't know what it's called or the history behind it. Um, and I'm sure I will look it up and learn more about it 
both while reading and before reading this book. I hope that Tracy Chevalier does something similar to what she did in The Girl with the Pearl Earring in bringing art history to life. Next, I did pick up a nonfiction book. I have The Lost Continent, Travels in Small Town America by Bill Bryson. I mostly picked this up because it's written by Bill Bryson. I don't know how interested I am really in small town America, uh, but I am interested in what Bill Bryson has to say about small town America. Next up is A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. This is a novel, but I was told it was a series of interconnected short stories, or I guess a novel told as a series of interconnected short stories. I love things like that. Um, Homegoing was a book that I really enjoyed because of that plot structure, and all of my favorite short story collections are interconnected like that. So I've been meaning to read some more Jennifer Egan since finishing Manhattan Beach, and I know that this is a favorite with a lot of people. Then I have Neil Gaiman's Fortunately the Milk. This is a middle grade book. Um, my husband is a huge fan of Neil Gaiman and this is a Neil Gaiman book that we don't own yet so I thought I would pick it up for him. It has lots of fun illustrations here and I can't wait to share this with him and possibly my son one day. Back to classics briefly, I guess. I have Eight Cousins by Louisa May Alcott. This is just a really gorgeous book, and I don't think I've ever seen Eight Cousins in print before, so it's nice to have a copy. At one of the book sales, I was feeling a bit nostalgic for my childhood and picked up some of my childhood favorites that I found there. First, I got Betsy Tacey, and Betsy, Tacey, and Tib by Maud Hart Lovelace. I devoured these books as a child. I absolutely loved them, and I would love to revisit them as an adult. They're just these sweet childhood adventures with lots of lessons about friendship and sharing. And then I picked up The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. This was a book I was obsessed with when I was younger. I read it like three or four times and I just thought it was phenomenal. So I really want to know how it holds up to a reread as an adult. It's about two orphans in Venice, Italy who fall under the influence of the Thief Lord who is this really charismatic 13 year old who leads a ring of children who are petty criminals and petty thieves. I remember that it had really great plot twists and turns, and like I said, I can't wait to read it again. And last but not least, I picked this up from a free little library, Between Two Ends by David Ward. This is a middle grade book about a boy named Yates who reunites these two pirate bookends who can transport him into a book. However, they're not very helpful at finding your way out, and so it's all about his adventures within books. It kind of reminds me of Pages & Co, just in the sense that you're traveling in story and in books. So that was my massive book haul, and Heather and I actually have plans to go to another book sale. I don't really need more books, but I have so much fun with her at these various library sales, so yes. I hope you enjoyed that. If you've read any of these books, do let me know what you thought of them. I have no idea when I'll get around to reading any or all of them, but I'm very excited about these new acquisitions to my little library. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in another bookish video very soon. Bye!